Indian economist that works and lives in California. And the focus uh, is uh, on poverty alleviation, that is an argument that we partly to the parts. And in particular, we're going to talk about economic um, policy issues in less developed countries. So, first of all, I want to give you a general framework about what I'm going to talk about and to introduce you to the general debate that is still ongoing these years. So we know that uh, in the last century, um, the mainstream policy economics, but in general the whole economic literature, uh, considered that there, is, there was a trade-off between efficiency and equity in poverty issues. That is to say, briefly, that uh, when a government <coughs> or an institution um, had to decide a policy, um, it had to decide whether to push efficiency or equity at the expenses of the other one. This brought to two main different point of view. The first one is that uh, only a program of important and direct intervention could better the position of these poor countries. And the second one was uh, that uh, um, they had to continue um, following uh, efficiency and uh, hope that indirectly this uh, could help uh, um, these poor countries. The evidence uh, um, shows that uh, um, the results were not as expected in the economies of the 20th century. In the last 25 years, uh, governments in poor countries have interfered a lot uh, in the market. And uh, they did it by these, uh, mainly by these three measures. measures. They put uh, high tariffs and quantitative trade restrictions to protect the economies. They um, provided underpriced energy and water, and they provided subsidized credit. This uh, um, was done mainly by the greatest institutions in the world, that were the World Bank and uh, the International Monetary Fund. Unfortunately, the results were not as expected. As expected, the economic growth suffered, so the efficiency part went kind of bad. But the, the crucial point is that uh, also the um, equality did not improve, and in some cases, even worse. Uh, so something was not working with the um, previous dilemma of the trade-off. And on the other hand, we saw that uh, um, in many countries in East and Southeast Asia, such as China, Vietnam, uh, Cambodia, um, these countries experienced a very fast growth uh, that actually brought to a substantial reduction in massive poverty. So, what the paper wants to analyze is, first of all, um, if there are cases in which this trade-off seems not to work, or at least seems to be over-exaggerated. The first case is uh, when poverty breeds crime and political instability. This is the case of very corrupted countries in which a, poverty for, um, a policy for poverty alleviation could also solve some macroeconomic um, problems um, that are due to the political instability. The second case is when there is a link between nutrition and work efficiency. That is to say, uh, in countries where there is a very high level of malnourishment, um, a better provision of food that can help also the efficiency of policy. And finally, and maybe the most important part of the paper, is um, whether there are redistributive policies that can correct market failures. Um, as economists, we, we, we say that market failures are um, like uh, externalities, asymmetric information, the provision of public goods. So, um, to stress a little more this point, uh, the paper analyzes the case of credit. Of course, expanding the chances for credit has always been seen, at least in the last centuries, to be one of the best uh, ways to um, solve uh, policy problems in um, poverty issues. But the results of providing underpriced credits uh, were mixed. Uh, in most cases, uh, um, the provision of subsided credit uh, has led to an inefficient use of capital. The example uh, in the paper is the case of India, in uh, which uh, um, the difficulties uh, to understand and to provide local information were so high that brought to a disaster. Uh, in the case of Bangladesh, instead, the, um, the results were good because uh, um, the policy were, was made in favor of a particular group uh, that, was the, that was the group of poor women. And we will 
stress this point a little bit more later. But first, uh, we have to see the case of uh, land reform. That is another very popular and very um, discussed policy um, about redistribution. There is empirical evidence that uh, uh, if land redistribution is made in favor of small groups, uh, this uh, uh, can boost the productivity and at the same time reduce poverty. Giving more power to the small farmers can let them access better to the credit and improve both uh, efficiency in the market and the competition. However, we have to be careful about it because if uh, this uh, um, land reform is made not in the right way, it can affect negatively the demand for hard work and depress at the same time the wages. Then the paper wants to uh, analyze uh, targeting. What is targeting? Targeting, uh, we can define it simply as uh, define who has to be addressed uh, to the policy that is taken. Large cuts in the budget subsidies uh, led to um, a need to um, targeting better the policies to vulnerable groups. First of all, we have to say that administrative cost for this targeting can be high, especially in less developed countries, because as we said before, there is very little information. It's very hard in these countries to uh, determine the trustability of uh, um, the borrowers. Uh, and moreover, um, a target program, um, that is to say a very specific policy, uh, can bring it to erosion for political support. Uh, in the paper, uh, it's analyzed uh, um, in deep uh, the case of self-targeting. That is to say, not only to choose uh, um, who has to be affected by the policy, but how and which goods uh, have to be provided to the group uh, we are addressed to. Actually, it seems to be more cost-effective and um, especially in the case of gender issues. As we know, um, the, the, um, the group of women in, um, in um, very um, poor countries is often um, excluded from the credit market and there are very high buyers that uh, um, do not allow them to enter in the labor market. This is not only an ethical ethical problem, um, but it's also an economic problem, because um, if uh, um, a policy um, could um, be addressed to this group, um, this could expand the economic and social opportunities for them. So, in conclusion of this paragraph, we can say that um, um, it, it's necessary to do a very good analysis of uh, uh, benefits and cost of this targeting, and if there are many externalities, these uh, can be good for, for the policy. In the last part of the paper, um, um, the author wants to analyze the benefits and cost of decentralization. That is to say, um, what happens if we move from a kind of state paternalism to um, a more local uh, government uh, rules. In effect, there is evidence that um, local um, institutions, in some cases, can better provide public goods and uh, significantly reduce the problem of absenteeism. That is to say, um, it seem, in this uh, view, it seems that decentralization could be um, the best way to, um, to, to solve this problem. However, it is shown that um, a joint management, management between the state and the local community um, is the case in which uh, me, much of Many of, most of the um, positive results have been found. There are also disadvantages of this uh, because uh, we have to be careful that there are always in a country economies of scale scope uh, and these uh, have to be in some kind, uh, um, somehow they have to be organized at a central level. On the redistributional side, decentralization can be not good because of the presence of corrupted local institutions. 
the, the fact that uh, a government delocalizes everything could lead to um, a possible empowerment of these uh, uh, corrupted uh, local institutions that at a national level general, generally are more compensated. The conclusion of the paper are that uh, um, the efficiency equity trade-off is still an open debate and uh, there is not an unanimous explanation of the phenomenon. There is evidence that in different cases that we said at the beginning, uh, the trade-off is false or, or is at least over-exaggerated. We analyzed the, the, um, the cases of credit and land reforms and uh, the results, uh, unfortunately, um, can vary in relation to different countries, different cultures, different economic situations, uh, so we do not have an, an unanimous vision of this. We then passed to targeting, and um, we said that targeting can be good, but we have to be careful to analyze the costs, the administrative costs that comes from targeting, and uh, the benefits that can come from the internalization of uh, some externalities. Finally, we described uh, decentralization and uh, we said that a partial decentralization can be good uh, in a poverty alleviation policy. If I have one minute more, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I want to give you my a comment about this because I think this is a very good uh, uh, way of uh, looking at the economy because this paper uh, tells us that we do not uh, just uh, need to look for efficiency, that is what uh, we always do in our economy courses. But uh, um, it is possible, finally, it's shown that it's possible to pursue both efficiency and equity. So I hope that maybe in the next years uh, then we find a way to pursue these two characteristics and not uh, only efficiency.